In this Nuage tutorial, we're going to talk about the automation fill modes. Uh, the fill modes are what happens after you stop um, writing automation. So um, what the fill modes can do is take the last value that you your parameter had when you, you stopped the automation pass and take that value and fill it for some portion of the timeline. So if you take here, we've got fill to punch, fill to start, fill to end, fill to loop, and fill to gaps. So um, I'm going to kind of do this out of order. Yeah, hopefully it makes a little more sense that way. Let's use the fill to end mode. Now there's also a fill to end button right here on the um, uh, on one of the dedicated automation buttons. So uh, if I start playback here on this volume automation that I've already written, and I'm going to pull the fader down, I'm in touch mode. So when I let go, the automation pass is going to end. Notice now the volume line goes all the way to the end of the project. It's, it's from, from that point forward. So that's what fill to end means. Now let me exchange that and do fill to start. So now I'm going to go down the timeline a little bit. I'm going to pull the fader way down. Then I'm going to let go. See how the value was filled to the beginning of the project. Fill to start. Now, if I have locators set, uh, like let's say the left locator is here, the right locator is here, and I want to automate uh, within this um, within the cycle markers, I'm going to press fill to loop, pull the fader down, and let go. So that value where I let go of the fader is now placed from the left locator to the right locator. So that's fill to loop. The loop is defined by the left and right locators. Now, the last two modes, they're a little bit different. So let's take a look at fill to punch. Fill to punch. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to start playback. I'm going to grab the fader, do some silly moves, and then I'm going to pull it down low. And then when I let go, the last remaining value was filled to the punch. And the punch is where I start the I started the automation pass by touching the fader to where I ended the automation pass by letting go of the fader. Now you can start an automation pass um, and end it in multiple different ways. There can be auto punch in and punch out for automation. There can be um, ta uh, touch and latch modes. You can take the track in and out of automation right. There's a bunch of different ways to start and stop the punch of automation. But fill to punch will take that last value and place it from the start of the punch to the end of the punch. Now, fill to gaps. Fill to gaps requires the use of virgin territories. So um, very quickly, I'm going to turn virgin territories on. Uh, it's one of the settings in the automation panel. And what I'm going to do is get rid of all of this automation. And I'm going to start over again. I'm going to write some new automation. Just a little bit here. And I'm going to let go. Now what's happened is the automation line is only written wherever I touch the fader. Here's some more. This is how virgin territories works. Um, I'm, I'm just doing a quick demonstration of virgin territories just to make the point here about how the fill mode works. So where the gaps in between these automation lines are considered the gaps for the fill mode. So if I do another automation pass, let's say earlier in the project, and I, I turn on fill to gaps, I'm going to touch the fader, bring it down, and then when I let go, the gaps become filled. All of the gaps become filled, except for at, at the very end. Um, 
but the one where I was automating, that's where the fill occurs. So the last um, value I had on the fader is filled to the next or to the beginning of the next automation curve. So fill to gaps is a little bit more complicated, a little bit um, uh, more advanced. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, that's how the fill modes work. Uh, the most common ones that I use are uh, fill to end and fill to loop. A lot of times I'll set up a scene or maybe a section of a song, and I'm trying to find the best level for one of the instruments or for the dialogue line, and I'll have it fill to just that section from the left right locator to the right locator. Or a lot of times if uh, mixing music, I'll be mixing along and uh, find a really good level for the guitar, and I know it's going to stay that way for the rest of the song or at least somewhere close, and I can let go, and the value becomes filled to the end of the project. So uh, there you go. That is the automation fill modes. And we'll be back with more tutorials on the automation system.